Hey everyone, we finally have some information on the new MSI handheld that's not coming from a leak. We've got some actual images, we've got a video, this is pulled from their X account. And now with having the website up, we have some actual specs we could take a look at that are beyond the leaks. There are some other leaks that have also come out that apparently there's going to be a few different models. But today we're not going to look at those rumors, we're just going to look at what we see on the website and what information we finally have confirmed. I do expect that likely on Wednesday we're going to get all of the information that we're missing still, like if there's different models and whatnot, at the MSI CES show, which I believe is scheduled for Wednesday morning, so I'll keep you guys up to date on that once I hear more. Alright, let's take a look at the website. So we have most of the information that we need for the device on here. This just went live about an hour ago from the time we're recording. So we have our website with basically the specs and some other things. So you can see that's running Windows 11, which is a surprise to nobody. It has the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, so this is confirmed. The software is MSI Center M, so we'll take a look at that. And then it says Hyperflow Cooling Boost, so we'll see what that's about. And you can see that it has a 53 watt hour battery. As we scroll down, we can see the ergonomics. So you can see that it has a bit more of a curve to it than the ROG Ally. So this might have a bit of a thicker grip, which me personally, I'm a big fan of. I don't really, I find the, the grip on the Ally to be a little bit small. And as we keep going down, we can see that we have a short little preview of the software. So you can see that we have brightness, sound controls, and a few other options that it looks like you can configure them. So kind of similar to ASUS's solution where you can basically adjust what's on the menu. So that's nice to see. Taking a look here, it looks like we have some sound settings, noise cancellation, media gallery, system info, SD card control. So I'm not really sure what that's all gonna entail, but it looks like we can control our RGB as well. And we've got some controller remapping. So that's nice to see. It looks like we can build a few different macros. I'm not sure how this will entirely work but uh, anyway it's cool to see that it's already gonna be built in from the start. And we've got our gamepad mode and desktop mode so I'm guessing that it's gonna be similar to other devices where the joysticks are a mouse when you're in desktop mode so that's good to see. And we can scroll down to see what else we got so we have a little bit of a breakdown about the new APU. Looks like we have six P cores, eight E cores, two less power E cores so I'm guessing low power and it'll have Intel XESS super sampling or XE super sampling. So we'll see what that's all about. Taking a look at the device here, you can see again, another angle of the grips. They do look like they're pretty decent size and we have two back macro buttons. And then you can take a look at the cooling system here. It looks like we have a dual fan system with two heat pipes, just like we do on the ROG Ally. Let's pray that our SD card slot isn't sitting right here like it was on the Ally. And let's keep going. So we have our 53 watt hour battery. They claim that it's 50% longer. I have very big doubts about that, but that's what their claim is. And as we keep going, we can see basically something about the RGB lights. We have 120 hertz display, that's seven inches. There is no mention of VRR, so I'm guessing that it's not going to have it because if they, you know, if they did have it, that would be something to be talking about. You can see that it's got pretty large bezels, so very similar to the ROG Ally in that way. Looking at the D-pad, you can see it's it looks pretty much like the ROG Ally, the same with the joysticks, like the same size, the same height when you look at a different profile. And even these buttons, they look like they're just mirrored from the Ally, so it's very, very similar. The one difference that I'd say here is that there's RGB behind the buttons, so that'll be kind of nice at night, maybe for some people, so you can see the buttons. For others, it might get annoying, so hopefully we can turn that off. And then it looks like we have front facing speakers. Continuing on, we can see that the controller has Hall Effect joysticks and Hall Effect triggers. So let's hope that there's no interference. I hope that they considered that because again, like the trigger and the joystick are very close here. And if you guys watched my video where I tested out on the Ally, there was interference that was uh, sometimes just unbeatable no matter what you did. So let's see what they did. Maybe they got that fixed. One nice thing to see is that we have Thunderbolt 4, so that should be good for eGPU solutions. We have two watt speakers, and here you can get a look at the I.O. So we have two rear buttons, the macro buttons. I'm guessing those are programmable. We have our bumper trigger, our volume buttons, audio jack. We have one USB 4 port, and it seems that we have our micro SD card reader at the top, and it's right by the fan, so I don't know. This is looking kind of scary to me. We have a fingerprint power button and a massive grill at the back. 
And looking at the front, we have our view button, our menu button, and then we have MSI Center M button, as well as a quick settings button. So very similar to the Ally. And we have our MSI App Center. So it looks like this is going to be for your Windows titles, and it looks like they're gonna integrate Android mobile games. So I'm not sure what that's gonna look like yet. And then we have a summary of some of the specs here. So we have our, of course, what we already talked about, the Ultra 7 155H, Windows 11. We have a seven inch display, that's 1080p, 120 hertz. And again, no mention of VRR. They say best in class 53 watt hour battery. Clearly they have not looked at some of the competition with much larger batteries. And a little bit more information basically that we've already covered. So let's take a look at some further specs here. We can see that uh, basically the memory is LPDDR5 at 6400 megahertz. I had originally said LPDDR5X, but it looks like I was incorrect. For IO, we have a micro SD card reader, USB 4, and also a headphone jack. It's coming in at 675 grams, so it's definitely heavier than the Ally, and it's 294 by 21.2 by 117 millimeters, and it seems like they're only going to come out in black. Now we can take a look at some of the photos. We'll take a little closer look. So again, not much different than what we had looked at before, but you can get a nice picture here. It really does look like an ally, especially with the angles here. You can even see this little line here where I'm guessing it tapers off just like the ally. Taking a look at the back, again, you got this grill across the top, just like we got on the Ally. We've got a massive grill back here, and just another photo of the angle. And here's where you can see all of our I.O. at a better angle. And one more for good measure at another corner angle. It looks like the joysticks are pretty high up, so this actually, to me, looks about the same height as the Ally, so I'd expect them to feel very similar. So looking at the claw, it looks promising. The price that I've heard leaked so far is that it's somewhere between $699 for a lower end model up to $799 for the one that we just looked at, the 155H. Of course, we're going to need to wait for that to be confirmed probably sometime during CES, but once I hear more information, I'll include that in my weekly recap. So that's gonna do it for this one. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.